crafty insights about Queen Caroline of Ansbach, the astute matriarch of history. Queen Caroline of Ansbach was a commanding figure in British history, wielding influence that surpassed expectations with her exceptional intelligence. Born into a German noble family amid adversity, her life's journey took her from the courts of Prussia to the regal palaces of Britain, setting the stage for one of history's most intriguing and ruthless family rivalries. Queen Caroline of Ansbach, a commanding presence as the consort of Britain, welded her power for beyond expectations. Her intelligence surpassed not only her royal spouse, King George II, but also most individuals. Caroline was a mastermind who devised intricate plots, often targeting those within her own family. Join us to discover one of history's most ruthless family rivalries. Caroline's tumultuous family background may have contributed to her complex interpersonal relationships. Born in 1683 into a German noble clan, she faced early adversity. Her father succumbed to smallpox when she was just three years old, and her mother passed away when she was 13, leaving her an orphan. Nonetheless, fate had great plans for her. Alone and vulnerable, Caroline found herself in the court of the King and Queen of Prussia, primarily due to her mother's friendship with Queen Sophia of Prussia. Sophia welcomed her as a ward and soon discovered Caroline's exceptional intellect, curiosity and emerging beauty. This set the stage for a significant turning point in her life. Caroline's aristocratic lineage, captivating beauty and sharp intellect led her surrogate mother, Queen Sophia, to hail her as the most agreeable princess in Germany. It didn't take long for Queen Sophia to consider a marriage proposal to the future Holy Roman Emperor. However, Caroline's response was nothing short of shocking. In 1705, Caroline faced yet another memento trial in her young life. That year, her beloved Queen Sophia tragically succumbed to pneumonia at the mere age of 36. The news left Caroline in a deep state of mourning, and she confined to a friend. The calamity is overwhelmed me with grief and sickness, and it is only the hope that I may soon follow her that consoles me. However, fate had a different path in store for her. Although Queen Sophia had departed, her memory lingered. In June, Prince George Augustus of the House of Hanover, Queen Sophia's nephew, paid a peculiar visit to Caroline's court. Strangely, he arrived in disguise, and his motives went beyond mere amusement. Prince George had a serious mission, to court Caroline and secure an heir. Nevertheless, his family's history and marriage matters were plagued by turmoil. The House of Hanover was notorious for internal conflicts, and his father's marriage to Sophia Dorothea of Sal had ended in tragedy. It was rumoured that the patriarch had murdered his wife's lover and imprisoned her for decades, separating her from her children. George saw it essential to investigate Caroline as a potential bride, but he couldn't have foreseen how this would backfire. George's infatuation with Caroline was evident from the outset. He had heard rumours of her incomparable beauty and mental attributes, but her actual qualities exceeded his wildest expectations. He couldn't divert his attention from her. However, Caroline, with her keen perception, recognised his true identity from the beginning. Fortunately for George, she found him appealing and eventually agreed to marry him. Nevertheless, she might have had her own hidden agenda. George's family had firmly established himself in the realm of dysfunction, as evidenced by his mother's imprisonment and estrangement. Yet, there was one distinct advantage they possessed. They were next in line for the British throne. While Queen Anne, their distant cousin, currently reigned, her health was fragile and she had no heirs. Thus, the sceptre was on its way to George's father and eventually George himself. When Caroline agreed to marry George, it's difficult not to speculate that she might have had aspirations for the crown, although she had no inkling of the challenges that lay ahead. Shortly after the wedding and a modest ceremony in George's homeland of Hanover, Caroline faced immense pressure. 
Her in-laws were adamant about the urgent need for a male heir. In fact, George's father went so far as to ban him from participating in military campaigns until Caroline was expecting, and the expectation was that their child would be a boy. This was the cost of marrying into a soon-to-be royal lineage, but Caroline had a knack for coming out on top, as she consistently did. Defying societal norms for their era, George and Caroline were deeply in love and had no trouble fulfilling their marital obligations. Consequently, Caroline became pregnant almost immediately, and she gave birth to a son, Frederick, in January 1707. However, what might have been considered a fortunate turn of events in other circumstances became a tumultuous beginning for Caroline. Shortly after childbirth, Caroline was struck down by smallpox and subsequent to pneumonia, teetering on the brink of death. The palace took precautions to keep her newborn son away from her to prevent potential infection, while George, devoted to his wife, remained at her side to nurse her back to health, even contracting smallpox himself. Fortunately, both survived, but it was only the start of a tumultuous journey with little Prince Frederick, and speaking of tumultuous. Although George's love for Caroline led him to endure smallpox for her sake, he did not restrain himself to a monogamous relationship. Much like many nobles of the time, George maintained multiple mistresses alongside his marital obligations with Caroline. It was evident because she gave birth to three more children, all girls, in less than a decade. However, there's an intriguing twist to the extramarital situation. Caroline of Ansbach was undeniable astute. She knew how to manage her husband's wandering eye. Rather than confronting it, she chose to embrace it and even encouraged George to discuss his mistresses with her. This way, she remained in the loop rather than being kept in the dark. Furthermore, she often employed these women as her ladies-in-waiting, giving her a watchful eye on their activities. Caroline brought stability to George's historically turbulent household, but she was about to face some challenging years. In 1714, Queen Anne of Great Britain passed away, and Caroline's father-in-law ascended to the English throne as King George I, with Caroline and her husband becoming the Prince and Princess of Wales. Consequently, Caroline embarked on a sea voyage to England to personally assume her new titles and adapt to royal life. However, there was something she had left behind at home. Join me in part two to learn about how, upon relocating to England and taking on their new roles, Caroline and George made the heart-wrenching decision to leave their seven-year-old son, Prince Frederick, in the care of his uncle in Germany. While it may have seemed reasonable at the time, it would be 14 long years before they would reunite with him, and their lives took complex and tumultuous turns. Caroline, in particular, quickly immersed herself in British intrigue rather than dwelling in sentimentality. Music